You know those long dark winter nights when you're a microwave radio experimenter and you can't sleep because you're suffering from existential dread and fear of the monster that lives under your bed? If you can't find a friend to talk to on the radio because everyone's sensible's long abed and snoring contentedly, I might have a solution. Down in Staffordshire, about 120 kilometres from here, on the other side of the Peak District of Derbyshire, there's a wonderful resource mounted on the hill at Moe Cop. Fantastic name. Probably comes from the Welsh mole or hill with cop, meaning head, appended. There's an outcrop of rock above the village with a striking castle ruin on top, or what looks like a ruin. It's actually a folly built in 1754. Also on the hill is a Web SDR, which consists of a 10 GHz omnidirectional slot antenna, a repurposed satellite LNB, and a software-defined radio, connects to a web server with an internet connection, hence WebSDR. Users can connect to the website and presented with a simple SDR interface and, assuming they know the trick of how to fool Chrome into playing audio, they can tune the receiver, select the mode and listen to what the SDR receives. For years I've used it to test my 10 GHz microwave transmitter, as the path to MoCop from here is marginal and only works if my station's working at tip-top performance. So there I was, sending beeps and bleeps, then a little Morse code for fun, and even a sequence of tones that made up characters in a 5x7 matrix, listening to the SDR stream and watching the waterfall frequency display. Then I had one of those late night daft ideas. Could I somehow send an encoded tone sequence that's normally used for moon bounce communications over to MoCop and then somehow decode the received tones from the web page while I was transmitting? Hmm. As with most things to do with a computer, the answer was Duh. Easy peasy. You're a computer radio and machining nerd, aren't you? How hard can it possibly be? Just get on with it. So, with Amy's uh, encouragement, I set about hacking something together. It'd be easy enough to run a second computer and do the decoding on that, but that's a bit too boring and ordinary. Let's see if we can do the transmit and concurrent receive on the same computer. We'll need to have a think about how to handle the latency between actual reception and the stream arriving back here. Serendipitously, there's a switch in most digital radio comms software to delay decoding until after a signal's had time to go to the moon and back. The total delay between the signal leaving my transmitter and arriving at MoCop's receiver is the usual 1 nanosecond per foot speed of light in air. So a 120 km path takes the radio signal less than half a millisecond. The rest of the delays for buffering decode, streaming into the web server, then delivering the stream out across the internet and through my web browser to the receive program is almost a second, much shorter than an Earth-Moon-Earth -Earth round trip. But the software seems happy to handle the details. I'm using one of the fancy new Q65 modes in WSJTX with sub-mode D and 30 second transmissions. I know I shouldn't, it goes all red and alarmy, but it still works. 60 seconds would be much kinder, Q6560D to be precise. First steps to set up WSJTX as normal for transmission on 10 GHz. I use an ELAD FDM Duo software defined radio as the exciter. It's got a direct USB baseband audio connection, so I don't have to worry about noise or distortion in the audio chain, or having incorrect levels. I'm running the current release of WSJTX on a fully patched Windows 10 desktop, but this should work on anything that can run WSJTX and a web browser. The FDM Duo generates an intermediate frequency of 28.890 MHz, upper sideband at 0 dBm or a milliwatt to those listening in monochrome. That feeds a G4DDK Anglian 2 transverter with an injection locked 116 meg local oscillator. The locking signal comes from an ADF4351 synth board which is locked to my main station clock, which itself is locked, loosely, to a GPS disciplined oscillator. None of that matters for this experiment, so long as you can stay on frequency for a couple of minutes without drifting more than perhaps 200Hz at 10GHz. I'm using a kit-built Kuna G2 transverter at the masthead. It takes a 20 milliwatt 144.890 MHz signal from the Anglian and mixes it with a phase lock local oscillator at 10224 MHz to generate around 100 milliwatts at 10368.890. 
That feeds a 10 watt gas fed amplifier and then goes through a waveguide relay to a WA6KBL Picket Potter dual mode feed horn that I made to Jeffrey's pattern as published in Dubus. The horn illuminates a 95 sem offset parabolic dish which has a rotator and an elevation drive all sitting on top of a SCAM 12 pneumatic mast. Absolutely none of that techno whiz matters a jot. So long as you can somehow get a faint sniff of signal into MOCOP directly via tropper scatter or rain scatter or hail or snow scatter, aircraft reflections, a building or structure reflection, and you can maintain reasonable frequency stability. So now we're at the point where we can send a sequence of tones over the hills and far away to Staffordshire. Firing up a web browser, I'll use Chrome, Pointing at the dynamic DNS address of the web SDR at MoCop, which is http colon mocopsdr.ddns.net colon 8901, and remembering to set the permission for the site to use audio, I can now hear my signal if I transmit in the direction of MoCop, and of course if I've made the requisite sacrifice to the gods of propagation to ensure that the troposphere or scattering medium won't just eat my weedy signal before it even reaches Sheffield. Huzzah! I can hear my bleeps and bloops coming back after a trip through the nether regions of cyberspace from the SDR receiver and web server over in IO83VC near that daft folly squatting proudly but dishonestly on top of its outcrop of millstone grit at the farthest reach of the dank and fog-ridden Staffordshire Moorlands. There's something rather satisfactory about the simple pleasure of generating an X-band transmission, making all the antenna bits and associated hardware and electronics, to get a signal over a most unpromising path, traversing some very large hills. Neil, remember you are from Lincolnshire, which is notoriously flat, right? You live in a part of East Yorkshire which is even flatter, if that's possible to comprehend. Olympus Mons is a very large hill. Everest is a very large hill. Even Ben Nevis is a fairly large hill. 1600 feet is a mere hillock, which rhymes with something. OK, OK, these things are relative. I get a nosebleed going up the Yorkshire Wolds, which are large hills the size of a small hill, if I've got my boulder memes right. I'm using Audacity to take the loopback interface of the PC speaker audio from Chrome and running with software playthrough of input enabled, with the output feeding a virtual audio cable, which is what the second WSJTX instance points at as its input stream. This is the sort of thing I get up to when I'm not machining or designing stuff or running simulations in the dark watches of the night. If you've stayed with me to the end, then thanks very much for indulging me. Next video we'll be machining a new tool for the shop.